I'm uh, Jim Hansen. I'm the director of the NASA Goddard Institute for Space Studies and uh, professor at Columbia University. But of course, when I talk about policy, it's my personal opinion. I'm not representing the government. Fair enough. Now, what is the one thing that you would like people to understand about climate science? Well, what they need to understand about climate science is that the climate system responds to the changes that we make in the composition of the atmosphere, but it takes time. And we can actually measure how far the system is now out of balance. And what it tells us is that we've only seen about half of the change that we're going to get due to the gases that are already in the atmosphere. And we're still adding more. So it's our children and grandchildren that are going to feel the big effects of climate change. And if we don't want them to have big problems, we need to start making, moving to clean energy systems of the future. Fossil fuels won't last for forever anyhow, but there's enough of them to cause tremendous problems if we don't phase over to clean energies sooner. Why do you think it's so hard for people to come to grips with the science of climate change? Well, I think one reason that it's hard for the public to realize that there's a problem is because the day-to-day -day weather fluctuations are, are huge, 10 or 20 or 30 degrees which is much larger than the, um, the trend due to human-made climate change. But that trend is actually substantial. And if we have a global average temperature change of just a few degrees, that's enough to set processes in motion, like the disintegration of ice sheets, which will cause very large problems on the timescales of the next several decades. So, but it's just hard for people to see this, although if they're perceptive, they can see that seasons are beginning to happen sooner. You, you look at things like the date at which lakes freeze over and unfreeze, or the dates at which the robins appear. You can, if you plot these over the, a few decades, you see that they're, they're changing. And the changes are going to be larger in the lifetime of our children and there are going to be many effects associated with that. Why do you think that putting a price on carbon is so critical at this well, stage? The fundamental point is that as long as fossil fuels are the cheapest energy, then we will keep burning them. That's as certain as the law of gravity. But the reason that the fossil fuels are cheapest is partly because they're subsidized, but mainly because they don't have to pay their uh, costs to society. The uh, human health effects of air pollution and water pollution from fossil fuels is enormous. But those medical bills are borne entirely by the public, not by the fossil fuel companies. And likewise, the effects on the environment, the effects on the future of young people, the effects of climate change, are not paid by fossil fuel companies. So we need to put a rising price on carbon by collecting a fee from the fossil fuel companies at the domestic mine or the port of entry and then that money should be given to the public in one form or another. I think it should be given in a monthly green check and they'll see uh, how much they're getting and they'll be able to make the adjustments to minimize the effect of increasing energy prices because there will be a cost associated with the fee on the fossil fuels, it'll make energy prices somewhat higher. But if all of the money collected is given to the public, then they will have the ability to make the changes to, to reduce their carbon footprint. So now, one of the things that we've been seeing in Canada is that there's a very strong resistance to adopting good climate policy because of our, our in energy industry. We have the oil sands, it's an extremely strong force in lobbying, and you have similar situations here in the U.S. What do you think policymakers need to understand about um, climate change to sort of shift the focus off of, off of what it means for industry and what it means for all, of, all Canadians or all Americans? Well, of course, they're going to, if we put a price on fossil fuels, it's going to, they're going to be winners and losers. The, you'll need to make adjustments. There will be, however, there will be more jobs associated with clean energy than there are associated with fossil fuels, which actually produces relatively small number of jobs. Uh, the governments will have to help with those adjustments, but if the funds that are collected 
from putting a price, a rising price on carbon, are distributed to the public, then overall there's not a cost. People will have to begin to make adjustments to their lifestyles, though. And finally, I guess if you could, if you could say one thing to people about um, what's happening with the climate and why we need to do this now and not later, what would that be? Well, what, what's happening with the climate, we can look all around the world and see that the things that we expected are beginning to happen. The Arctic sea ice is decreasing. The Northwest Passage was open again this year, the second time in the last few years. Uh, ice sheets are beginning to melt. Greenland ice sheet is losing mass at uh, more than 200 cubic kilometers per year. Antarctica is beginning to lose mass. The mountain glaciers are melting all around the world in the Rockies, the Andes, the Himalayas, the Alps. Uh, the subtropics are expanding, which is causing problems in the southern United States, in the Mediterranean region, Australia. There's, and most of all, perhaps, it's the effect on the hydrologic cycle. That means, on the one hand, heavy rainfall and floods. Because the atmosphere holds more water vapor as it's warmer, we're getting heavier rains and greater floods. But at the times and places where it's dry, the higher temperatures cause the droughts to be more severe, the forest fires to be more severe, and that's another problem. So what has become clear is if we want to have the type of world, the type of climate that we've had for the last several millennia, we're going to have to uh, stabilize the atmospheric composition. That's become very clear scientifically, but the public doesn't yet understand the implications of that. How sure are you in uh, what you are, what you've been saying today about climate science and about what's happening? How confident well, are you? Well, we're we're very confident about what we're saying about climate change because we have all this record of how the Earth's climate changed in the past, how the Earth responded to changes in atmospheric composition and surface properties. But also, we can observe now that the planet is out of energy balance by about three quarters of a watt. What that means is that we've got about as much warming already in the pipeline as the warming that has occurred over the last century. So that's enough that it's going to cause big changes, including the loss of all Arctic sea ice in the summer. So that's why we need to phase down the fossil fuel use and actually decrease the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere, which we can do by means of improved agricultural and forestry practices. We need to store more carbon in the soil. We need to replant some of the areas where forests have been cut down. Thank you very much. Thank you.